Today we're going to learn about freebasing. So before I even get started, I do not condone the use and abuse of any illicit substances. This channel is purely for educational purposes. This is going to be added to a series on prescription and recreational drugs. I think this is very, very interesting and hopefully you guys learn some new stuff. So let's get started. So before I talk about freebasing, we're going to do a little intro into cocaine. I will make a video on cocaine because it's a really interesting topic and it deserves a longer discussion. So what is it? A lot of us think of powder cocaine and that is cocaine hydrochloride. It is a central nervous system stimulant. It's extracted from the coca leaf. It's white, powdery. It's also water soluble. Now this is a really important piece when we're talking about freebasing or crack cocaine. And the preferred ingestion method is nasal, so snorting, injection. I think snorting is the preferred method. I don't know, I don't do any of this stuff, but that's what I found. So what are the effects of snorting? Let's go to number one. So when you snort, it's absorbed in the nasal mucosa, this very highly absorbent area in the nose. It's relatively slow to kick in. Now I know there's differences in the composition compared to crack cocaine. It takes a little bit more time. The effect isn't as instant, at least the climax of the effect. Uh, it produces euphoria, energy, you become talkative, aroused, alert, and there are more side effects. Again, it does depend on the composition. When you're talking about pure cocaine, which from what I understand, you won't really find, there are more defined side effects that are consistent. So number two, the damage. I think this is really important because when you do snort cocaine, especially consistently, you will completely destroy your nose in that whole area. You can get infections, airflow obstruction, your whole nose can pretty much collapse, the cartilage can be damaged. 2A right here, septum perforation. So if you look here, we're gonna zoom in. This is not the hole through which you breathe. This is the septum of your nose. So if you take your index finger and your thumb and put it in your nose and squeeze that divider, that is what's happening here. This person has consumed so much that it's eaten away at the septum and that requires surgery and all kinds of other stuff. So you can't smoke it, number three, because cocaine hydrochloride decomposes rapidly at high temperatures. So it's chemically, it's a waste of product, which is why you have to convert it through freebasing to get a product that can be smoked. So crack cocaine. Most of us have heard about crack cocaine. It did a number on a lot of communities in the 80s and still unfortunately affects a lot of people today. So here's how it's created. Again, this is not the specific recipe. This is just the general chemistry. So you have cocaine hydrochloride. When you boil it in water, throw some baking soda in there. The baking soda as a base will convert this cocaine into a, another form. It's still cocaine, but the physical properties are different. Um, outside of the byproducts, let's go to number one here. Once this is performed, the layer, the oily layer, is collected via filtration or through some kind of solvent like alcohol. It's a very simple preparation as far as the recipe is concerned in the chemistry. Number three, it's oftentimes cut with other substances to extend supply or potency. And sometimes uh, fentanyl is involved and there's been a fair amount of people who have died from fentanyl overdoses thinking they were consuming a pure cocaine, more so pure. Like I said, it's hard to find the pure stuff. So for it can be smoked, why? Because this form, this new form, is now stable at higher temperatures. Again, like I said, the physical properties change. This is why crack cocaine is smoked because it's in a new form that can be consumed by smoking. And so you can see there's clear differences between the two products, at least in their physical properties. And you can see that it is crumbly and rock-like. This is the form that it takes when you filter it and dry it. So what are the effects of smoking this converted cocaine hydrochloride? Well, it's delivered to the bloodstream via the lungs. There's a much quicker onset of effects. Within seconds, you feel the effects as opposed to the powder version where it takes a little time to peak. So there's euphoria. You can often have a loss of appetite. 
which can contribute to significant weight loss, increased energy, an intense but short high, and more damage, alveolar hemorrhage. So in our lungs, we have these little sacs where gas is exchanged. When we breathe air, it gets to our bloodstream. Those sacs can bleed out, which cause a whole host of issues, pulmonary edema, fluid in your lungs, pneumonia, and there's a lot more. The list goes on and on and on. The whole idea is you don't wanna consume any of this stuff from powder cocaine to crack cocaine. It is not a good idea whatsoever. So just to summarize at least the comparison, you have cocaine hydrochloride, which is a powder, uh, increases alertness, euphoria, you have energy and paranoia. Then you have crack cocaine, alertness, euphoria, energy, paranoia. The effects are very, very similar. They can differ, but in reality, it's still cocaine. Like I said, the physical properties differ and some of the effects differ, but across the board, it's very, very similar. It just comes in different forms. And then we talked about the side effects of cocaine use, especially consistent cocaine use, infections, airflow obstruction, nasal collapse, and this perforated septum. I'm gonna zoom in just to reinforce that this is not something you wanna put in your nose because it can destroy your whole nasal function and it's just not a good look at all. Uh, then with crack cocaine, weight loss, because of that loss of appetite, alveolar hemorrhage, pulmonary edema, pneumonia, and again, the list goes on and on. It's not something you wanna put in your body. None of this stuff is stuff you wanna put in your body. So let's go through the summary. Uh, just to summarize what we talked about today, like I said, it's a quick video and I'll do a longer one on cocaine. I just wanted to do a comparison because I thought it was interesting. So let's get into the summary. So we started out with cocaine in general, powder cocaine. Uh, it's a stimulant extracted from the coca leaf. It's white, powdery, and most people prefer to snort it. And it exists as cocaine hydrochloride. And then there's various effects of snorting gets absorbed into the nasal mucosa, this highly absorbent area to produce euphoria, energy, but there's also damage, infections, airflow obstruction, septal perforation. And you can't smoke it because it decomposes at high temperatures. And then we talked about crack cocaine, how you take cocaine hydrochloride at a base. And I wanna mention real quick, the solubility in water is important because the cocaine will dissolve in water and that allows for the chemistry to turn it into its base form. And now it can be smoked because it is more stable at higher temperatures. And it's also often cut with other substances. And then the effects of smoking, euphoria, loss of appetite, which can lead to weight loss, intense but short high, but then there's damage, alveolar hemorrhage, pulmonary edema, pneumonia, none of this stuff you wanna go through at all. Then we made a quick comparison of powder cocaine versus crack cocaine. They both have very similar effects, but also very different consequences with use, which we talked about earlier. So that's all I got. I hope you guys learned a little bit. Like I said, it was a more general overview, but I thought some of the chemistry was interesting. And again, like I said before, it's important to just be educated on this type of stuff that we see in our everyday lives, even if it's in media or stuff like that. So as always, thank you so much for watching and listening. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Tell your friends, and I'll be back soon with another video.